God has blessed you. There's nothing the enemy can do about it. He's frustrated. But what he can do is to make sure you self-destruct. By situations, sometimes you put your hand in something you're not supposed to put your hand into. Sometimes you judge things that you're not supposed to judge, the things that you don't know everything about. Sometimes you get involved in things you're not supposed to get involved with. Sometimes you go to places you're not supposed to go. Sometimes you do the things you're not supposed to do. The devil had been with God before. He knows what can make God turn. I pray for you. His mercy shall never leave you. His mercy shall never leave us. In the name of Jesus. We're going to read Isaiah 1 verse 18 together. Isaiah 1 18 together. Come now. Ready? Go. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. Take your seats. God bless you. God bless you. You know I love you right back. I can't fully hear you, but you know I love you right back. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. There are instructions guiding athletes depending on the race they're on. It affects their training, affects how they run, affects their looks, affects everything about them. When you see them on the, on the track, they wear the same flimsy clothes. They look alike. Sometimes they jog on the spots. It's as if they do the same things. No, they're different. That's why you'll see some athletes, they're fat, some are thin. The sprint racers need the way to pull to do 100 meters dash or at least 200 meters dash and just finish, finish in a short while. But the marathon racer needs stamina. He doesn't need speed. That guy cannot afford to have weight. So the training he has is different from the training a sprint racer would have. So the fact that all of, all of them are wearing the same sport uniform does not mean they are going to the same place. Bible says, let us run the race that is set before us. There's a race set before you. Therefore, you can't say someone is doing well. You can't judge somebody. You can't say they are doing badly. It depends on the race set before them. The marathon racer does not get to the 100 meters dash and stop running. He will never receive the medal that way. He needs to pace himself for the long haul. So if you, if you see that his third position and he gets to 100 meters dash, you don't judge him because he's not uh, at the finish line already. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will not only run, you will understand your race. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For us to win the race that God had called us to run, we also must have obedience in our hearts. If you don't obey the coach, if he tells you to sit down, if he tells you to do push-up, if he tells you to jog on a spot, if he tells you to do frog jump, if you don't obey him, you're not likely to win the race. Major people lose the race of life because they miss their instructions. If you want doors to open and fling open for you, if you want the double doors that God has promised, you have to follow his direction. There are a lot of people that obey God and they do the things they've heard, they do 50%. They do 20%, 10%. In fact, I challenge you, if you, if you are able to do 50% of the things that God has told you this year, you'll be 
in a different place by now. One day God spoke to me and said, you're more educated than your obedience. And that is true. Think about how many messages you've heard. The things God has spoken to you. The things you've read. How many of them are you doing? How many of them can you see that you're walking into? Or you're walking in? We keep listening, but we don't walk in instruction. And sometimes, we hate instructions. <laughs> I don't know about you, the first language an average human being is likely to learn is the word no. No. Have you observed your child or your niece or your nephew? No. Or why? Because his human is a dummy after Adam fell. For you to ask God questions and process, why am I doing that? Why are you telling me that? No, I'm not doing it. So we tend to do the things that go well with us, the things we expected, the things we planned for. But when we see things that are outside what we planned for, we think they are not our instructions. And the door that you intend that God should open this year, we open by instructions, by obedience. In 1 Kings 22, there are a lot of people who don't like instructions. They don't even like the people that God uses to give them instructions. In 1 Kings 22, I want to start reading from verse 5 because of time. At this point in time, Israel are divided into two. Ten tribes were Israel, two tribes were Judah. Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. Ahab, his cousin, was the king of Israel. You know that Ahab was, King Ahab was in a backsliding circumstances. So he had these prophets around him that would tell him, oh, do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. But Micaiah, a prophet of God, decided not to go to Asherah. He wasn't popular. You won't see much of him on the dailies. He just stayed with God. And so Jehoshaphat wanted to go to battle with his cousin, uh, with his, uh, wanted to align, align with his cousin to fight a nation. But they needed to inquire. We know that Ahab right now is in backsliding circumstance, but he had not come out full-fledged. He was still fluctuating. He will serve God a little bit and serve Baal a little bit. So Micaiah now said, um, Joseph said, is there yet not another prophet? Why did he say that? This guy, Joseph, was working with God. He sensed that even though going to war was a popular opinion, it made sense. We can't serve these people again. Now, if you notice how many prophets prophesied that they should go to battle, 400. Talk about numbers. Talk about popular opinions. Talk about democracy. Talk about what trended at the time. 400 prophets. Only Micaiah. So they won Micaiah. I should have read to you. Please read from verse 5. They won Micaiah. Now you are going to the king. 400 prophets had prophesied that they should go and fight the battle, that they will win. If you have two heads, get there and prophesy that you should not go. So Micaiah got there and did that as they said. He said, oh king, go, you will win. But his spirit did not free him to do that. He did not allow him to do that. <laughs> so Joseph said, the way you were prophesying, I feel you're lying. He said, exactly. Since you, <laughs> you want lies. Disobedient people like people that will say what they want. They like people. Then the king of Israel gathered prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, shall I go to Ramoth Gilead to fight? 
or shall I refrain? <laughs> Anytime you had an opinion and you went to God, he would never tell you otherwise. It, would just, it can be quiet or he just allows you to do what you wanted to do. That's the, why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your way, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Pastor Biodo, I've not heard God lately. You've not acknowledged him, so he, he wasn't able to direct your path. Don't be wise in your own eyes. No, be neutral. Tell the Lord to speak to you. Tell him to talk to you. And assure him that whatever he says, you will do it. That's when God will talk. I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, that makes it look like the devil is winning in your life. In the name of Jesus, Colossians 2.15 shall be a reality. The enemy shall be disgraced. The enemy shall be disarmed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you look at verse 8, 1 Kings 22 verse 8. Joseph has said, is there not still a prophet? In verse 8, the Bible says, so the king of Israel, Ahab, said to Joseph, there is one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. He knew he was a man of God. Whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. I hate him. You look at one person and you just hate them and that's the particular person that God wants to use for you. Think about it when you were in school. Or maybe you are still in school. Listen to me. That teacher that will ensure that there's no exam malpractice. What did you do? You hated him. That teacher that said you must speak English. Don't speak vernacular. What did you do? You hated him. The people that we ensure that God has put on your way to ensure that you fulfill your destiny, what did he do? You hated them. That's one thing the enemy does. You must be on guard. He turns your back to someone that God wants to use for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that every aspect of your life the enemy has been winning, this evening he has lost over you. I said he has lost over you. He said, because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. He saw that as evil. People hate people that tell them the truth. I want you to do this. I want you to go this way. No, no, no. I want people that will tell me what to do. You know, this story is very interesting. If you read along, you know what the king of Israel said when this guy prophesied and told him not to go to Israel, not to go for that war. He said they should take him to his assistant and his first son and banish him till he comes back. And Micaiah said, if I be a man of God, you will not even come back. You know, Ahab was a smart sinner. When he got to the battle, he told his cousin, Joseph, be careful about those living in sin that you are close to because you are related to them. I don't know why Joseph went to that war because he knew he wasn't supposed to go. He told him, you wear the king regalia. I will be a man of war. And he was fighting. When they pursued him, he shouted, I'm not Ahab, I'm not Ahab. Yeah, where is Ahab? Nobody knew where Ahab was. The Bible says somebody threw a sword in a venture. He just looked at the direction. And just two sword. Not that they saw Ahab. And they, the sword went straight into his liver. And he died. He bled and he died. That thing you are doing, that the enemy is using to set you up for destruction, in the name of Jesus, your eyes shall open tonight. Your eyes shall open tonight. You will not end like the devil once planned for you to end. In the name of Jesus. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. Talking about the spirit of the end time. Paul was speaking to Timothy, his son. He said, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Are you that kind of person? That you, you are ready in season and out of season? 
you know some people when they don't have money, they say, I'm just sad today because there's no money. So you're not yourself. But I've learned, no matter what you're going through, be instant in season and out of season. Bible says, convince, rebuke. If every time your pastor comes, you're smiling, you're laughing, you're happy, something's wrong. Sometimes it needs to convince you. If everything he says goes with what you thought before you came, he's not preaching good. Sometimes he needs to convince you. Sometimes he needs to rebuke. Sometimes he needs to exalt. With all long suffering, in other words, he should persevere even when people don't like him. And teach him. Teach him. Verse 3. For the time will come. Tap your numbers in now is the time. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, they want people, that, they want pastors that will, they have each in ears, they have pastors that will be teaching them what they want to hear. So I, I, I don't agree with what that pastor is teaching. I don't, I don't feel, I feel that pastor's message more. Well, it depends. Maybe God has not sent that person to you. If you read this in the, in the uh, uh, KJV version, because I love the way it comes out. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves, teach us, having each in ears. Having each in ears. That's how disobedient people behave. They will have a reason. Why they should go this way? Why they should disobey God's word? And what happens at the end of the day is that the enemy wants to steal, wants to kill, wants to destroy. In verse 4, the Bible says, and they shall turn away. They are hearers from the truth. They attend the church, but they turn away their ears. You thought they were hearing. No, they didn't hear. And shall be turned into, on, on, they, they will be turned unto fables. I pray for you. This message you are hearing today, you will profit out of it. Amen. Your life will never remain the same. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Ahab said about Micah, I said, I hate him. I hate him. Is it not interesting that the people that God has sent to give you counsel, counsel that will take you out of the bondage that people in your, in your bloodline have been through, counsel that people that you've known, that I've gone ahead, you have, have, some are, are still there. God introduced you not to come with your opinion, not to be who you are, who you've always been, but to change. If a man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Come unto me, O you that labor and a heavy lady, I will give you rest. Take my yoke and do what? Learn. If you don't learn, you will not see what you're supposed to see. That's why when Jesus died, he made sure the church started. He made sure some things happened to make sure that what he died for is, was not lost concerning you. I pray that you, the born again that you got will not just be a title behind your name. It will affect your destiny. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When the battle started, I would have loved it if the 400 prophets that prophesied to Ahab, they stood in that battle to say, Ahab, go, we are behind you. They were at home. Sometimes the people that advise you, I wish that, that friend that bounced you off will stand be beside God when God is indicting you. He won't ask you what kind of air you carried. He won't ask you how many houses you built or how many cars you drove. There's nothing wrong with those things. What he will ask you is, did you fulfill your assignment? The thing's bouncing you off. The, the person that spoke that to you, the person that encouraged you to continue to sin. The person that took you off your duty post. I wish the person would stand beside you when you will give account. Sometimes some things don't make sense. Sometimes it's not what you want to hear. Sometimes you don't deserve what is happening. But that's what God wants you to do.
I wish the 400 prophets, they were there. They were at, they were at home. They prophesied. No permanent addresses. They, they took money from the king and boom. Some people just want to impress you. Oh, no, 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 you can't put that way. No, they don't even know the beginning. They don't know what plans God has for you. They don't know the whole thing. I pray in the name of Jesus. Anything bouncing you off is out of your life today. Is out of your life today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I said you, you will be liberated today. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says there's a way that seems right unto a man. The end is destruction. If it was the beginning, oh, we turn back. If it was the middle, we can turn back. But you get to the end. The end. Any lifestyle, any kind of thing you've embraced, no matter how nice it sounds or it looks, that is different from what the Bible has said, it will lead to destruction. The devil will win. I pray in the name of Jesus. Everything the devil has planned to win in your life has been aborted tonight. Has been aborted tonight. You know when Samson went to Timna to meet the girl, Delilah, the parents said, no, this is not what God said. Samson, you are strong. Samson, you are anointed. But this is not what God told us. In Judges 14 verse 3, <laughs> we're going to read many versions. Judges 14 verse 3. Quickly, Judges 14 verse 3. Then his father and mother said to him, is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, get her for me. Because in those days, they don't give you a wife. Your family will go. He said, get her for me. For she, she pleases me well. We're going to read the last part in the message translation. Message translation. Quickly. But Samson said to his father, get her for me, for she's the one I want. She's the right one. You put a knife to the neck of Samson, she thought she was the right one. Dog, we won't lose. Or we won't lose. <laughs> I know, I know some people speak PG very well. No, they listen to his master whistle. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't let what you are exposed to bounce you off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get her for me. She's the one I want. Be careful what you want. Be careful what you like. I pray in the name of Jesus. Tonight is the beginning of deliverance for somebody. You will enter into a new dimension. God will help you. In the name of Jesus. I know you came here so that the man of God will perform this way and perform that way. But I'm telling you, this is that puzzle you need to solve. And there will be a vista of new horizon. I say you enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. In Esther chapter 2 verse 13. Now let me, let me, let me give a background to this. You remember that Vashti messed up. Because King Ahasuerus was the most powerful king on earth at the time. He ruled over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. So he organized a feast many months. When the feast was about, you can imagine how rich it was that every day they were eating, every day they were dining, every day they were drinking for months to celebrate his anniversary. On the last day, when the booze was high, he said, you know something, guys? I want to introduce my wife to you. Everybody shouted. But Vashti sent a message to him. I'm not a showpiece. When I wanted to see you, you didn't invite me. I, I couldn't come to you because he had a law that you couldn't just come to the king except the king sent for you. Maybe you can. One of the guys that ruled with him he stood up and said, hey, oh king, <laughs> let this booze clear from your eyes. Oh. Our wives are here. If 
you allow this to pass. That a woman can say something and it will stand. Huh? When we get back to our provinces, our wives will be rude to us. People say, good dog, good dog, good dog, good dog. The king too shook his head. They said, sir, you are the king over all these provinces. Why don't you organize a beauty contest? Now, it's normal to you. It was strange then. Never happened before. Just call for virgins to come. And you will choose which one you want. Ah, the king said, ah, good idea. Good idea. And that was how they called virgins from every... And then they banished Vashti. And then they, they punished her, they banished her totally. And the, the king had to have another wife. Now they invited virgins to come. Esther, who was an orphan, was raised by a, a, a cousin, uh, Mordecai. They went there. Mordecai had warned her, don't reveal where you're from, the country you're from. Since this man ruled over 127 provinces, as at the time, Israel was under his colony. He didn't even bother to ask. Since he ruled over all those provinces, he just he was testing all of them. They had to soak themselves in oil for a year. Now, if you look at Esther chapter 2, verse 15, verse 13, first of all, verse 13. Thus prepared each young woman went to the king and she was given whatever she desired. Whatever she desired. Whatever she desired. Let's read this verse 13 in another version. Uh, let's read New Living Translation. And when it was time for her to go to the king's palace, she was given a choice of whatever clothing and jewelry she wanted to take from the harem. That was the storehouse. It was what she wanted. Okay, go back to KJV because of time. Hallelujah. Are you getting something? In verse 14, the Bible says in verse 14, and in the evening she went in, and in the morning she returned to the second house of the woman and whatever over there. Look at 15, everybody. Now, when it was turned, when the turn of, uh, came for Esther, Adasha, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, you know what she did? She requested nothing. She requested nothing but what a guy, the king's eunuch, who was a guy? This guy had seen many kings. He was born and castrated. He was raised up in the, in the, in the palace. He knew the perfume the king wanted. He knew the dress the king likes. He knows the, he knew the music the king likes. Come on, talk to me. So every other woman went in and they did what they desired because they will give you anything you desire. But when it was time for Esther, Esther said, no, I desire nothing. Hey guy, what you want? I want to be obedient. I want to do what the king wants. I want to do, I don't just want to go because I'm beautiful. Remember, all of them were virgins. So maybe your sister there thinking, yeah, I don't sin, I don't do this, I, I kept myself, there is no enough. All of them were virgins. Maybe you are a man, you are thinking, hey, I just thank God for my life, I've been born again for a, so, a long time. Yeah, you've been born again for a long time. Are you obedient? Are you doing what a guy wants? Who is the a guy this morning? The Holy Ghost who tells you what the king wants. And the Holy Ghost will never tell you anything that the Bible, that is not in the Bible. He doesn't have words of his own. So if you, if you are there saying, oh, the Holy Ghost told me I can do this, it has to be consistent with the word. It has to be consistent. That area you are having trouble, that area that it seems the devil is winning you, like, are you obedient? Do you know that half obedience is disobedience? Let it stop in your life for you not to obey God and turn around and play the victim. 
it doesn't end well. The devil is very smart. He can't stop you from being blessed. God has said you'll be above only. Your marriage is blessed. Your children are blessed. Every single thing blessed. But it can make you to self-destruct. We all have done things before. But don't continue in those things. Because if you continue, you will get the result of the recipe you are gathering. All of them were virgins. Is that not enough? Young girls who made a choice in all the provinces, they called. I mean, the place should be full if everybody was a virgin. But these were guys that stood out. They checked them. They fulfilled that aspect. But half obedience is not obedience. Delayed obedience is rebellion. So if you are the type that does what is convenient for you or the things you are, you've expected, or you can enter into this thing I'm talking to you about. Now, there are lots of 450, 400 prophets that will tell you, don't worry, just believe in grace, just do this, just do that. I'm telling you, they are still, maybe they're still, uh, what, what did I call that prophet? Micaiah, they are still Micaiah on earth today. People will tell, they, they are not, they, their mission is not for you to like them. They will just tell you this is the way it is. This is what the Lord says. This is what you need to do. Concerning your relationship, this is what you need to do. Concerning your job, this is what you need to do. Concerning your salary, this is what you need to do. Concerning your prayer life, this is what you need to do. Now, God is good. Okay? But I tell you what God, the way we deal with you when you are a baby, is not what He can use you the way some of you are living your life. He can advance. You can enter into a new dimension the way some of you are living your lives. I pray in the name of Jesus. One thing that I prayed for tonight is that your eyes should be open. Amen. Your eyes should be your eyes should be open. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every girl went to the palace with a bag. Esther dropped her bag. Bag of request. Bag that she... Drop your bag. Drop your request. Drop your plans. And pick up the plans. And let a guy tell you the plan. What can work with the king? You'll be shocked the new dimension you will enter. And I pray in the name of Jesus, God will honor you. Amen. I say God will honor you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I need to run fast because tonight, I, I, I want to keep to time. There's a warlord in Israel. Uh, warlord, he wasn't an Israelite, but this guy was so solid, he could fight. It was the person that ensured that the kingdom was in place for the king. But this king, this, this warlord, had leprosy. Normally, if you had leprosy, you'd be banished. But you couldn't banish this guy because it was the reason why war had not taken everybody in the country away. So when they went to fight one day, they captured a girl. The girl noticed that this guy, Naaman, was a was a leper. And told the madam, I said, madam, there's a man in Israel, sir. If this man prays for Oga, Oga will be healed. So the wife whispered it to Naaman. You mean we'll go to our enemies? Just go so that you'll be healed. Because very soon this leprosy will spread and the king will not have a choice than to banish you. So when they got to Elisha, what shocked Naaman with all the extra of, of gorgeous pomps, with all the pomps of pageantry with which it came, Elisha did not come out. Elisha just spoke from the house. Go and wash yourself in Jordan. What? Jordan? <laughs> Jordan was muddy. When you looked at the water in Jordan, you could hardly see the base. It was muddy. If you wanted to have your bath in peace, you came early in the morning when the water settled. Once people start to have your bath. 
You won't, you won't, you won't notice if someone drowned because it was a dirty water. Mud all over the place. But there's a place called Abana and Fapa, where Naaman came from. My God, one of the wonders of the world. Hanging garden. You know, you saw, you saw fountains before you saw the water. Fantastic place. And uh, Naaman was offended. I said, ah, uh -uh. I should go and wash in Jordan. Is he trying to humiliate me? I came to a pastor. He's, he's, he's rubbing insults <laughs> on my injury. Is it because I came to tell you about my marriage? Eh? You are, you are telling a man what to do with his family. What are you saying? You are trying, to, you are trying to, 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 to teach me how to handle money? Before I met you, Pastor, I've been making money. <laughs> you are trying to tell me how to raise my children? What are you saying? What are you saying? The question I want to ask you and I is that was Neymar not having his bath in Abana and Faba before he came? Why? Did he believe that the prophet should send him back to the usual place? Human beings like what they're used to. They like what they're used to. They don't mind for things to go in the same way. My prayer for you tonight is that things will not go in the same way. Yeah. Things will not remain the same. Yeah. As you return from here, you return in power. Ah, when you appear one time, demons will scatter seven times. Yeah. Obedience can deal with the devil any day. I command in the name of Jesus, your experience will be different. In the name of Jesus, you will experience blessings in the city. You will experience blessings in the field. You will experience blessings when you go out. You will experience blessings when you come in. Everywhere you turn, the blessing of the Lord shall be upon you. Your ground will be soaked and wet. No more dryness. In the name of Jesus. What will open your heavens will happen this evening. God will drop it in your spirit. If you believe it, shout him in three times. <laughs> Naaman said, I've said it, Israel. Fight, no go finish. Even prophets. Ah. Uh -uh. I, I've said it. I've said it. They can't win me in battle, but they can win me. In battle. And I confided in this prophet. He didn't even come out. And somebody said, Sir, is it because this instruction is so simple? If they told you to bring seven cows, you could afford it. If they told you to bring seven stars, you can't fight anywhere to get it. Is it because it's simple? Why don't you do it? The Bible says that he did it. As he did it. As he did it. His skin was like a baby's skin. Tonight, as you do what God has said, you will come back with testimonies. It may be foolish. It may be dummy. It may be stupid. But as you do it, you come back with testimonies. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. The first miracle recorded, first miracle of Jesus Christ recorded, they went to Canaan Galilee. You know the story, you're familiar, how the wine finished. Has wine finished in your life? Finishing your marriage? Finishing your destiny? Finishing your career? Are you struggling? Are you sad? Are you, are you, what is happening? I tell you, I will preach to you the first message that Mary preached. The man even said, Jesus even said, my time is not up. I've not gone to Jordan. He said, don't mind him. Whatever he tells you, the trick is, whatever he tells you, just do it. That's the trick. Even when he doesn't want to do miracles, whatever he tells you, don't have a mind of your own. Don't say, no, I'm used to this. Mm -mm, this. If I do this, oh, I'll be cheated. Oh, if I, no, no, no. Whatever he tells you, just do it. You know the instruction? Fill the water pots with water. What? You know the meaning of that? 
the water pot was for sacrifice. When you, you know, the, the road in Jerusalem was muddy. So when you go to a party, that water pot that you dug your legs into and washed and you came out, Jesus said, fill the water pot with water. My God. <laughs> when you get on, go and read it. You never thought about it. He was a one power water pot that was just with, no, 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 no. That water pot that they were using for sacrifice, that water pot that they were using to wash legs, fill the water pot and fill it to the brim. Let's read verse 8. You will notice something now. And then he said to them, draw some out and take it to the man. He didn't say taste it. He said draw it out, take it to the... Somehow between when they drew it out and when they took it to the master said, something changed. Naturally, you want to, <laughs> let's taste it too. <laughs> Don't let us disgrace ourselves though. No. Now, in verse 9, please watch this. When the master of the feast had tasted the water, that was made wine. I did not know where it came from. But the servants, they were looking at them and saying, hey, today, not today. Because they knew. But the servant who had drawn the water, the, they knew where it came from. They knew where it came from. They knew, what does that tell our intelligent man? Where it came from was not a normal place. I don't know where you are from. I don't know your village. I don't know the curse that is from there. As you do God's word, you will see wonders. I said this is the year that people will gather to celebrate today. If you believe it, shout amen three times, somebody. Do you know your kids can open the door? So drop what you brought in the bag and pick the bag of a guy. Pick the bag. Is a new bag what the king wants because what you brought from home can open the door. Pick the bag. It's time for you, in the name of everything will change for you. Amen. I say everything will change for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. as the Holy Ghost gives you instruction in this season, as you do, you see, let me tell you. What is telling you right now is not something you say, Lord, speak to me, yours haven't here. No, you know it already. Small things, tiny things, tiny changes are you just put in place. You'll be shocked. I don't know if you believe me. When I just gave my life to Christ, our, our pastor had somebody who came to him, a woman, Say, my husband is giving trouble. My husband is not nice. The pastor said, no problem. The pastor told his peer to, to make like uh, a granulated thing, uh, Tom Tom. And told, I'm telling you a true story. And told the woman to come back next week that there's something he must put in his food. But when he's eating, the trick is, be with him, ask him, how is your day? How has your day been? In three days, the woman rushed back. I said, Pastor, <laughs> what, did you, what did you say I should put in his food? Pastor, it works like fire. Like fire. Pastor said, tell me, what happened? If I tell you the pastor, you'll be so shocked. I won't tell you. <laughs> you'll be so shocked. He told the story himself. <laughs> I'm telling you, I heard this story in 1996. When the pastor told her, it was Tom Tom. I just wanted you to do this, and because I knew when I was praying for you that you needed to work on this. It's not the devil. It's on this. I don't know what your instructions are. You may not like it, but that is where the solution is. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let someone's eyes be open. That amen is not correct. May God rescue somebody. 
that thing that will make you different from your lineage, let it happen to you tonight. In the name of Jesus, many are too educated for their obedience. Too many instructions. Instructions here, instructions here. You are even tired. You write notes, you don't even read notes. The things that God is speaking to you in your spirit now, just do it tonight. It may not be what you're used to. It may not be what you grew up with. But what the Holy Ghost is telling you, that is the solution. He said, Nathaniel, you are, you, are, you are tricked because I spoke about you when you were from afar. He said, very soon you will see heavens open. And from now, you will see wonders. I pray for you. You will see wonders. Amen. God will help you. Amen. God will help you. Amen. Now I command in the name of Jesus, let everything that concerns you turn around and change for you. Amen. Let your story be different. Amen. Surprise your adversaries and excite your friends. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let grace work for you. Amen. Let honor work for you. Let the word of God walk for you. Let God smile upon your face. In the name of Jesus. May you not be ashamed. In the name of Jesus. To open new doors, you need to walk in that thing that you are holding. Let it go. Let it go. Now tonight, I want to pray for a set of people. Just one set of people. Pastor Biodo, I want to take my relationship to another level. I know that thing. And I know I'm not in a Catholic church. You are not about to ask me what that thing is. But I want to do it publicly. I want to come out and talk to God about it. If that's you, come. Let's pray together. I want to walk in a new level of obedience. I'm so sure that God wants me to walk in a new level of obedience. If that's you, don't wait for anybody. Just come. Just come. Come. Some people, they want to come, but they're waiting for people that want... Come, 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 come. Just come. Come. Come and pray. 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 Cry to God. Tell him. Let it go. When the enemy asks you when you get home, tell him what I what I what the Lord wanted me to do. I left it at Koza. It's no longer with me. Tell the devil I wish you came yesterday when I had it with me. But right now he's in Koza. Go ahead and talk to God. Pour your heart to God. Go ahead. Go ahead. Walk with integrity. Walk with integrity. Walk with integrity. Jesus, I give it to you. My lifetime, I will give God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Let the guy, the heavenly guy, tell you what to do. If I give God my lifetime, He will take care of me. Talk to God. Go ahead and give it to Him. Release that thing. Release it. Come on, release it. Release it. If you are inside the crowd, you want to do that prophetic obedience, just take a step forward. Because I heard God like I heard my name. I know my name. I heard Him. Go ahead and pray. There's no magic about you coming forward like talking to God. Coming forward, you are saying, God, I believe you can help me. I believe you can do it. I'm not doing this by my strength. I'm doing it because I believe you can help me to do it. Are you murmuring or praying? Spend some time. Spend some time. Oh, thank you.
as you're praying now, the Holy Ghost is telling you, what about this? What about this? Let it go. Let it go. So that the time of refreshing can come from the Lord. From the Lord. Anybody can be impressed by you, but if God is not impressed by you, it's not going to be good. That it may be well with you. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. What is that thing that you need to let go? Let it go. Let it go. We're about to pray. Come on, quickly. Let it go. We're about to enter another dimension with our prayer. But let it go. Any ladder of the enemy, any door of the enemy, any breach of the enemy, let it go. If you are willing and obedient, if you are willing and obedient, if you are willing and obedient, was that thing standing between you and God? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name we prayed. Now we're going to take that prayer to another level. Now the enemy has no part in your place. Say after me, Father. I heard your word. And I believed your word. I confess Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe he came in the flesh. I believe he died on the cross. I believe on the third day he rose from the dead. Therefore, everything he did by his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, I receive today into my human spirit. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe you are raised from the dead. Jesus, I believe you are alive today. Reign in me in Jesus' precious name. Now you're going to pray. Now you are born again and I want everybody to pray. You're going to say in the name of Jesus. Every door the enemy has used to torment my life. In the name of Jesus, be out of my way. Pray that prayer. Every door the enemy has used to torment my life, be out of my way. In the name of Jesus. I will know the truth and the truth will set me free. Guilt, shame, whatever it is the enemy has used, anything in my past, I command you be out of my life. In the name of Jesus. Any blood covenant, in the name of Jesus, you have no hold on me anymore because I now belong to Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And you're going to pray right from time. You're going to pray from your heart today. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command. Are you ready to command? Say, in the name of Jesus, I command every shut door that is of God to fling open for me. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer. Some of you, the doors of countries are closed unto you. Any kind of dry, open, closed heaven, let it open right now. In the name of Jesus. Are you murmuring or praying? In the name of Jesus, I command for doors to fling open for me. Let opportunities come. In the name of Jesus. I've obeyed, now I'm ready. Let the opportunities come. In the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You have a few more minutes. I can't hear you. Come on, command that sickness to go. Command that infirmity to leave. In the name of Jesus. Declare your new day. Declare your new day. Former things have come to pass. New things declare it. New things declare it. 
thank you Jesus in Jesus precious name we pray first thing that I'm led to say that court case has ended that court case <laughs> I don't know who you are your warfare has ended your warfare has ended in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now somebody has been having a cold in one nose consistently consistently I don't know whether you're here or you're watching I just saw you in the spirit before this time tomorrow because that thing is not normal cold coming out of one nose and you've tried to use everything it didn't go and it comes with headache sometimes I command that thing to cease right now in the name of Jesus that headache that causes you not to look down I command it to end I command it to end Pastor Beardon, how, how can you command like that? As soon as they hear my voice, they will obey me. Why? I'm under authority. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I command every pain. The ones in the leg, the ones in the joint, the ones in your chest, I command every pain to go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. That pain you feel when you walk. <laughs> take some steps. At home, take some steps. Just walk, just walk, just walk. I command it's no longer there. It's no longer there. In the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I command your healing. Every oppression, no more. Every bondage, no more. Now I command in the name of Jesus, let doors fling open for you. Remote jobs, receive it. From nowhere, receive it. From nowhere, receive it. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing your application being treated right now. I'm seeing your emails right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, you know what I just heard now? Even jobs you didn't apply for. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You are highly recommended. In the name of Jesus. Open doors on every side. Open doors on every side. There's somebody here. This is how you know I'm a man of God. There's something you've been wanting to sell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In seven days. <laughs> God will surprise you. Receive the grace for open doors. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That toothache is gone. In the name of Jesus. That toothache is gone forever. Not only in the service is gone forever. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to mention some things you're going through because of time. I need to close in one minute. Mention that thing. Say in the name of Jesus. Tomorrow I will share my testimony. Declare it. Say tomorrow I will share my testimony. Some of you will go to the bathroom after now. Some of you go and test yourself after now. Tomorrow I will share my testimony. Thank you, Father. Nothing will steal your testimony. Nothing will steal your miracle. And the word you've heard tonight we abide forever. Amen. You will profit out of it. Amen. Your prophecy will appear unto all. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name.
Let's give the Lord a mighty, mighty, mighty hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're one minute before eight and I want everyone to go. But I'm telling you, don't keep your sickness. Don't keep bondage. Don't keep demons. Let it go. When the demons want to tell you, hey, I want to come back, knock, knock, knock. You tell them, go away, go away. I left it in Koza. God delivered me. That is how to keep your deliverance. And tomorrow, we'll have time to share testimonies. Yeah. If I'm going to hear your testimony, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. As you leave this place, God goes with you. Amen. It's your shama. Amen. He perfects all that concerns you. Amen. Your healing is permanent. Amen. Your deliverance is permanent. Amen. Your being born again, your, your, your new life is permanent. Amen. You will come back with testimonies. Amen. Go and come back with testimonies. Amen. I prophesy that your, your sleep will be different. And your journey home will be smooth. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Say to your neighbor, say surely. surely. Only goodness and mercy shall run after you. All the days of your world. You will live. You will dwell. You will tarry in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.